So, gaze centers you have two, one is frontal eye field basically in the frontal lobe that is all what is required and parietal eye field. parietal row. So, uh, these eye fields uh, send signals to a single nucleus that nucleus is hardwired to the opposite side nucleus and they send signals to their respective muscles where which are innervated and that acts synchronously which uh, which results in this uh, synchronous kinds of movement. So, so that is about the wiring part of it, the nomenclatures and a uh, little bit of uh, what is what what constitutes the mechanism for eye movement. But uh, we jump in a little. So, uh, so what would you see virgins per set V O R R logical, you know, you have you have um, you have a necessity and I think I have explained to you what the necessity is. You need to fix, fix an object to the fovea, you know that is the function which is being implemented. You ensure that the, uh, the light from that particular object is always falling onto the fovea and that is how you get uh, attention. So, that is the idea of it. Now, uh, having said that, so having told that the odd man out or the odd woman out here is saccades and saccades is, is a mystery. So, I told you that uh, at the end of the story I should tell you how, how uh, how it is different from um, camera. Now, one of the key formation, uh, key uh, key concepts in image formation is stability. And uh, if you look at camera technology, uh, a lot of effort is there in uh, camera. Uh, stabilization. So, sharper images, right. So, you are the engineers, you should tell me that you agree with this logic that uh, stability is directly connected to sharper images. Now, uh, that is how a camera, you know, that is that is the that is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the more stable the camera. Uh, you have sharper images. So, sh stability can be ensured with a uh, high sensor um, what you call sensor uh, rate uh, which is uh, implying that uh, you know uh, very low uh, image acquisition time. Right. So, you have a high sensor rate, you know, you have very small durations of exposure by which you capture that and so that is uh, that causes a reduced image acquisition time. Uh, then you have uh, image stabilization. So, you have this, uh, you know, 3, 2, 1 and photo that is you have time for the camera to be stabilized when you capture the photograph. So, you you can and then you obviously have got um, uh, post processing after capture, after capture of the image. You know, so, uh, uh, so there is a lot of tech which is being devoted to this idea that you need to have sharp crystal clear images uh, by which uh, and there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of tech devoted to ensuring that the light gets spread uniformly across the image 
and uh, um, uh, and this is the image which she uses the raw material for image processing and all subsequent things. So, better the quality of the image, better is the output in segmentation, object recognition, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, this is a fundamental principle which is there in camera tech. Now, if we look at uh, the eye, it is odd because you have motion as a fundamental problem. Now, uh, motion is a fundamental problem. If you remember my discussion on MRI, you have heart beat. I told you there is a pressure wave which is generated from the heart and then it goes and if you remember the uh, where all the pressure wave there are these arteries in the eye. So, retinal arteries you can s sort of see the pulsation it is uh, more than seeing part of it I want you to imagine that these things exist. So, you, you, so you have uh, motion due to that. And on top of that, as if that is not sufficient, you have uh, respiration. In fact, your entire body moves with respiration. And on top of that, you have saccades. So, in uh, you know, it, it is as if the body is looking forward for um, unstable image. So, somehow the body conspires that you have an unstable image. Uh, having said that the term image itself is in question because of uh, things which I have discussed in my earlier classes. So, there, there is an uh, there is there is there is the there is this notion that uh, human vision is not uh, is not uh, you know uh, is, is is completely different from camera based uh, vision, image based vision, and uh, you know we have video uh, vision. So when we saw our earlier diagram that uh, you know saccades uh, saccades help in uh, fixing from one object to another object which may be uh, face, uh, there can be an object. So, uh, so this is uh, you know this is this is what the uh, saccades, uh, saccades do. So, uh, what it means to say is that we almost never have an image uh, neither in the eye nor in the brain. So, there are these uh, fleeting glimpses of the uh, entire uh, environment, a part of which is captured through saccades. The saccades sort of sample, sample an image as opposed to capture an image, which is what happens in a camera. So, so I, I uh, this is an audience to which I can confidently discuss this kind of a, uh, this kind of a stuff. You have to acknowledge that it is there and it has been there evolutionarily. So, you should understand that it has some significance for which it is retained. For systems which are dynamic, you know, uh, for the body, uh, the biological system understands that it is never at rest. You have to be dead to be at rest, you know. So, there is no way in which at the highest levels of your concentration, at the deepest levels of sleep, are you stable, static, immobile. And the visual mechanism incorporates uh, incorporates systems. I'm calling it a systems by which, you know, uh, the, uh, it it it, uh, it 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 does something different to capture the visual information, photon-based information from outside. And this information is what we use for majority of our work. 
and uh, that is something which I wanted to highlight. So, the term sampling of an image is, is something which I need you to take forward. People who are interested can work on it and if you remember somewhere before in my prior class I had used this keyword Nobel. So, uh, why it is a keyword is uh, now I think you can understand. So, if for people who are familiar with image processing, people who are familiar with uh, camera tech who have an idea of how camera tech works. Uh, the gyroscopes to stabilize cameras and you know the sort of fancy cameras which are there, uh, they would understand uh, they would need meaning they would I hope they understand that the uh, eye human eye or the biological eye works on very different mechanisms, very different principles and it is an, a very effective image processing system. So, image processing in the uh, in the biological concept is not just about capturing images and getting shapes, segmenting, uh, feature recognition and comprehension of the objects. It is a different ball game altogether. So, it is it is uh, it is at uh, it is at various levels. I think I will muddle it a little more. Now, we look at uh, a very related topic of uh, 3D object. perception. Now, why did I choose that? I think you would arrive at the answer at the end. So, uh, 3D object perception. So, uh, we will go back a little bit on my earlier slides on um, vision and uh, we will start out with that. So, uh, 3D object perception is uh, now how do you perceive 3D? You need uh, multiple uh, samples of object and uh, that would infer depth perception. Right. Uh, so, you uh, what I mean why I use the term multiple samples. So, you have two eyes which give you uh, you know uh, uh, two viewpoints and uh, that gives you an information of depth. Then, uh, so that is the conventional idea, you know, it is called as uh, uh, binocular vision. So, binocular vision is you, you need to, you need to, you need to look at, uh, you are looking at from uh, uh, two different eyes and then, uh, then you are able to perceive uh, depth in a given uh, visual scene. So, that is that is how you perceive depth in it, but uh, you know uh, you you close one of your eyes and then uh, see objects you still can uh, find out a lot of depth information which is there. So, which indicates that you know two eyes are not the not not absolutely essential for uh, depth perception. So, uh, so the lot of uh, a lot of information is got from uh, context uh, you know two human beings uh, sorry uh, two human beings uh, standing uh, you know if you are if you are able to if you are able to uh, uh, see two human beings standing uh, person one one is closer to person two because of uh, change in height you know so so that uh, this distance can be computed based upon uh, based on this uh, difference in uh, height so uh, so the i uh, so this is way in which you know you can compute uh, distance between uh, distance between two objects based upon known factors say so, known factors are you know you have a perception of uh, how objects look within your field that is an learnt, uh, learnt experience and even more than learnt many of it is ingrained within your networks. So, object recognition is already built in and then you can decide 
which object is in front of what other object and you have a sense of distance based upon incidentally based upon your experience. So, for for me as a surgeon I can uh, I can perceive objects which are within about 2, 3 millimeters in uh, depth that is that is my job. So, for people who are uh, who are you know outdoor and and uh, who work in uh, large distances can actually relate to objects to a uh, extent of a couple of kilometers. I am, I am very bad at that. So, I, I know that when I look at an object at a distance, uh, then uh, I, I would not be ab able to exactly relate how many miles, kilometers, meters it is far from me. So, there is a lot of learned uh, stuff there and uh, the uh, perception of depth is related to all of that. Now, also you can also if you if you add in lighting, you know, uh, uh, if you had add in lighting, you have more interesting things in which you can get a shadow out of the person. So, uh, 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 so the, these are mechanisms by which you can you know you can uh, you can uh, relate to uh, relate to distances and depth, and uh, you compute uh, depth. So once you get the depth information, you have 2D switching on to 3D. Now, why did I spend time uh, discussing something like this in a context of a saccade? Now, that is where I would like to uh, go back to this particular diagram, in which you know, uh, which which uh, which requires some. So. Uh, I did specify earlier that uh, this is the fovea and uh, please do note it is it is concave. So, uh, our uh, you know the place where the image is formed is a concave surface, concave surface. Uh, so, the sensor is sensor is concave as opposed to I think uh, most cameras at least which I know camera uh, is all planar you know you have a plane planar and then 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 that uh, that uh, uh, the planar uh, so retina camera so, concave retina, con, uh, planar camera. So, that is the sensor system. So, this is sensor. Next is uh, you, you have uh, yeah, two eyes and uh, there is uh, there are this. Uh, so, you have two eyes then there is virgins. None of these things are there. No, in camera. No, you you don't have. Uh, uh, you do have uh, two camera and three system, uh, three camera systems. Uh, but uh, say for example, mobile, uh, in which it is sort of better to extract the two D information, three uh, D information. But uh, so for us, we have retina. You have a two eyes, and you have virgins, which is a dynamic system by which you compute. And then you have contextual uh, contextual uh, image context. Image context. I think that's the wrong way of putting it. Image context, or more than image, it is object context. Context that also is lighting form uh, shadows. Uh, I think uh, those from India please do look up at uh, Professor V Ramachandran's work. Work and uh, you know how shading uh, shading gives you the sense of depth and people who are uh, interested in animation um, would uh, understand the importance of uh, lighting, shading as uh, uh, as important concepts in uh, animation in 
3D depth perception. So, so that's that's how uh, things are. Now, um, I still not explained uh, why uh, why I've been looking at it. So, if we look at uh, saccades, so we come back to our original discussion, saccades, uh, and I did use this uh, term of sampling. So, you know, uh, you are sampling an object multiple times. So, you have you are sampling an object multiple times and maybe saccades do have a role in 3D object perception. Now, how it is I have not found any literature please do check up if you do find literature get back to me on that topic. But uh, 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 what I perceive and understand of saccades one of the roles of saccades is this. There is another role which I told you which I think you can um, you can connect to my earlier slide where I showed a Nobel um, blink. Uh, it is connected to that. So, uh, so saccades are very interesting phenomena, uh, phenomena of the eye. Uh, which are very mysterious you do not have an exact role it works in all uh, works against all principles of uh, camera tech which we have had so far in which uh, you always feel that as an engineering problem to stabilize camera reduce uh, camera sensor exposure times and to get better images the eye works exactly the opposite in which it deliciously makes a already chaotic system more chaotic with saccades by which uh, images are formed, captured, processed, uh, processed not only in um, three dimensional space, but also in time. So, with that I leave you with a lot of food for thought and uh, food for thought to, uh, to understand what is try to understand what is happening. Uh, for those people who are research oriented, uh, there are very good uh, PhD problems listed all along the way in both uh, the vision part of the story, the movement part of the story, the depth perception part of the story. Uh, 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 why PhD problems? Because basically I am asking you to relook at the visual apparatus in a completely different light after having listened to my some 3 hour lecture on the visual apparatus in general. So, uh, with that I think I will conclude vision uh, for the time being uh, maybe sometime later I will have to use some context, but uh, some, some aspects of vision. But uh, uh, this is sort of the closing statements for this huge and important chapter on uh, understanding human vision as we understand it now. And as I told you uh, uh, that is an important uh, closing statement because I have uh, left it as as we understand it now lots of stuff to be discovered. There is a lot of tech influence which need to come to biological uh, uh, to understanding biological vision and that is where I uh, stop. Please do contribute. Thank you.